Well, we're here with Keith Ferrazzi, author of Who's Got Your Back and Never Eat Alone, which, by the way, just uh, came out as an updated yeah. version. Um, so, first of all, standing ovation in front of our crowd with that's a, a rarity because they, they love people, but you know, you, you brought it out at them. Two things I wanted to discuss. First, this very simple but powerful exercise of identifying the relationships. Yeah. The relationship will, action plan. Yeah, so talk a little bit about that. Sure. Um, look, I believe that most businesses have squeezed all of the operational improvement blood out of the turnip. Mm. I believe most businesses have su successfully financially engineered. <clears throat> There's no question that the big opportunity for growth, acceleration is people. And if that's true, then the question is, how are we being strategic about it? And strategic and purposeful is not what most people apply to people stuff. Yeah. So it's real simple. I mean, I just asked the question, who are the, let's start simple, you know, yeah. who are the 25 most important people to the growth of your business that if you were to accelerate the strength of the relationship with those 25 individuals, you would have um, <clears throat> a faster trajectory to the growth you're looking for. So if that's true, then you start thinking constituencies, mm -hmm. clients, of course. Yeah. So if you're a B2B business, um, those big strategic accounts, but, but not the accounts, the people, right? So you may have a very strong relationship with a director at a particular strategic account. You're not gonna get any more out of that relationship. You have to get that relationship at the CIO level, yeah. right? Or the prospects, you know, who are those new key accounts where, or connectors, influencers, could even be media. I mean, if you're bringing a new yeah. product to, to the market, who's that individual that's gonna launch and, 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 uh, and usher that through? And yes, internally, you've gotta make sure, listen, if you're an executive team and your, your relationship with your head of sales, yeah. your relationship with the head of your distribution channel, whatever it is, is strained, damn it, put it on the list, make it an A priority, and begin to fix it. And I thought what was interesting, you said, look, on some kind of a scale, if you really were honest, if you put that list down and said, you think you got a great relationship, but you probably don't, what, it, what does it mean to have a great relationship? What, what are those steps that well, you need to take? There. The one thing I was saying is, if you really are honest, not just about the strength of the relationship, but if you're yeah. honest about which people you should choose. Mm -hmm. Again, most people will say, oh, well, it's so important that we have that account at Procter & Gamble. And they'll put the name of the person down who would they currently have a relationship with a Procter and yeah, Gamble, all right. the familiar relationship. And they'll yeah. say, oh, that's a level three relationship. Yeah. Well, but guess what? You're not gonna get any growth out of that relationship. Yeah. You don't have the CIO down. That's a level zero, yeah. right? Or worse, maybe there's an individual that is in another division that used to come from one of your competitors and inevitably has prejudice against you. It's a negative one relationship yeah. and you avoid them. Bullshit. Just go ahead and make sure that you're being honest and rigorous and hard pushing. And that's why it helps as a team. The strength of a relationship has four basic elements. Okay. Um, all great relationships are first measured in terms of what we call relational quality or intimacy. It's the likability factor thing. Yeah. You know, how much do I care about this person? And that's the RQ score of negative one to, to three. Right. The next thing is generosity. All great relationships, you do not have a level three relationship if that person isn't thinking about your success. Mm. Now, how do you get somebody to think about your success? You better have really made them successful. Mm. And you know, as you well know, my mantra is all relationships, to build a relationship, you lead with generosity. Yeah. We can talk about that. The other two elements of a great relationship are candor. It is not a good relationship if you can't tell the truth. Yeah. It's not a good relationship if you're tiptoeing around and you're conflict avoidant. And then finally, accountability. The, you can have accountable relationships with clients. Mm. I've got relationships with a particular client I mentioned in the other room that um, I kick his ass all the time. Yeah. And he does the same thing for me. And I have to tell you, it's one of the greatest friendships, authentic friendships I have, and it's also our most important relationship as a client. Intimacy, generosity, mm -hmm. candor, accountability, all laid out in who's got your back. Um, but the mindset principle of leading with generosity and developing in intimacy is what I was known for when I first wrote Never Eat Alone. Got it. Sorry, long answer. No, no. Sort of, you, did, you asked me the question, and it sort of summarizes my entire life. Look, you spent an hour in there, and we hardly scratched the surface. So that's why they've got to read these books. I want to switch gears there and look at the executive team. And you, you really hit us all between the eyes 
when you asked us a couple of key questions about when we looked at each other across the table. Bring that alive here sure. for a few moments. Yeah, what's, that, what's that question? God, I mean, we all sit in teams and we're spinning around our head worrying about whether we're performing. Yeah. And we may even be jealous, not jealous, maybe um, uh, angry, frustrated, annoyed at peers mm. for their lack of performance. Um, but yet we sit there and we worry about our relationship with our boss. Instead of looking across the table and saying, um, do I give a damn about that person's success? Is it my responsibility to help them be successful? That's a shift. Yeah, Most individuals, executives would say, no, it's not my success. It's not, in, fact, in fact, why do I give a damn? Yeah. That guy who's running XYZ brand, if he doesn't do that well, I look even better. Mm. Bullshit. A high performing team looks across and, and doesn't see the CEO, but looks across eye to eye and says, we're not gonna let each other fail. So every member of that every team. Every single member of that team holds each other accountable. Has to feel that way about has everyone. Has candor, has generosity, and has intimacy. Four key characteristics, uh, not as a hub and spoke, but across all of the elements. Now that is highly, highly unlikely yeah. in most organizations. But if it becomes an aspiration, yeah. and you work the exercises, the stuff that I was talking about in the room, yeah. um, the stuff that I talk about in my books, the stuff that we do as, our, as consultants, but if you really work the exercises, you can accelerate all four. And it's gotta be diligent, because you'll slip back into old, as you know, as I talk about, old addictive behaviors. Exactly. Uh, I, I know it's a competitive magazine, perhaps, but I wrote this great piece that I love, I'm very proud of it, in Harvard Business Review. Yeah. And, um, and it talks about how addictive we are, are to old behaviors and how we use very similar uh, interventions yes. to what 12-step programs are in our own organizations. I hope you got a kick out of that. I did, I did. And so I think I, at the end of the day, all of this helps to free up the CEO. So they're not the ones stuck in, like you said, the one-on-one -on -one meetings having to be the bad guy. It is the responsibility of everybody the on the team. CEO's fault too, because yeah. as CEOs, we become so comfortable with um, our role as manager, our role as individual accountabilities are, as opposed to our role as strategic facilitator, enabler of each of the individual's relationships. Um, outward uh, evangelists, all the things we could be if, we, if, if, our organ, if our teams actually cared about each other's success. Keith, thank you for making this trip over here and sharing group. this wisdom with all of uh, us. It was, a, it was a blessed day. You guys had a great group and I appreciate being invited. Thanks a lot. You bet. Thank I you so much. It. Yeah. You bet.